Okay, so this evening we are going to continue our discussion of projector abortion, which we looked at last last evening. Okay, however, our focus this evening is going to be on the derivation of formulas which we can use to calculate the physical quantities which we need to describe projector motion. We are interested in getting a formula for how to work out the rise time, which is the time it takes your projector to reach maximum height. We are also interested in coming up with a formula for working out the maximum height, which is going to be reached by a projector given the initial velocity and the angle at which this projector is fired. So our interest really is in how do you find the time it takes your projector to, write, to get to maximum height if the only things you are given are the velocity with which a projector is fired and the angle at which that projector is fired. What formula can you use? Okay, we are also interested in coming up with a formula for the fall time. How much time does it take your projector to fall? The other thing we are interested in is coming up with a formula for something called flight time. The time it takes your projector to fly or the amount of time or the duration for which your projector is in, is in the air. We also want to come up with a formula for range, which is the horizontal distance which a projectile is going to cover. We are going to show you, using the same steps we did yesterday, how to come up with these formulas. You, we want you to understand how we come up with these formulas so that you can have all the confidence you need to use these formulas. We do not do guesswork. What we did yesterday was a bit tedious, but you can do something once and for all by coming up with these formulas in which we can just substitute values and we can get what we want. Okay. So, as, as I've said, the, we want the formula for rise time. We want to come up with the formula for maximum height of a projectile. We also want to come up with the formula for fall time. Then we want to come up with the formula for flight time of any projectile. We want to come up with a formula for the range of a projectile and also want to come up with a formula for the strike velocity. So, like we saw yesterday, if we are talking about the projectile, then two things have to be known. You need to know what is the velocity with which the projectile is fired and you also need to know the angle at which this projectile has been fired. The velocity with which a projectile is fired or launched into the air, that is what we denote as, or we denoted as the initial velocity U. And the angle with respect to the ground at which the projectile was fired, that is what we denoted as theta. After doing that, taking note of these things, we proceeded to recognize that a projectile actually moves in two different directions at the same time. A projectile moves horizontally at constant velocity and it also moves vertically with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. If the projectile is rising to maximum height then that acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second. If your projectile is coming back from maximum height in the vertical direction then the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second. So that's what we, we did yesterday. Say a projector moves in two different directions. The other thing we did is we came up with a table of components. We wanted to find out how much is the velocity with which a projectile is fired along the x-axis and along the y-axis. How much was the initial velocity of the projectile in the horizontal direction, that is the x-direction, and how much was the velocity in the vertical direction, the initial velocity. And how we worked out these things, ux and vx, 
was ux we worked out as u cos theta and dy as uh, u sine theta so we find the initial velocities of the projectile along the x-axis and along the y-axis along the x-axis the velocity won't change because along the x-axis there is no acceleration in the y direction or the y-axis the velocity will change because eventually this thing has to reach maximum height when a projectile reaches maximum height the velocity is always at maximum height the velocity is always going to be equal to zero meters per second so there is a change in velocity from the initial velocity in the y direction which is u u y which is equals to u sine theta to a final velocity of zero meters per second so there's acceleration as your projectile goes towards maximum height its velocity reduces by minus 9.8 meters per second at maximum height it has got zero meters per second when it comes back from there its velocity increases by 9.8 meters per second so all this is what we found out yesterday and we worked out so after working out the components of the launch velocity the x components and the y component the next thing you're going to do is we are going to concentrate only on the motion of the projectile in the vertical direction or the y direction and we are going to ignore what is happening along the x-axis the simple reason why you ignore what is happening along the x-axis is because you always know what the velocity is along the x-axis along the x-axis there is no acceleration meaning that along the x-axis the velocity is always constant so whatever the initial launch velocity is along the horizontal direction that is what it's going to be all the time so you can afford to relax and ignore what's happening along the x-axis your focus should be in what's happening along the y-axis and what do you want you what do we want you to find we want you to find the rise time we want you to find the maximum height reached by the projectile we want you to find the amount of time it takes the projectile to fall from maximum height which is the fall time we also want you to find the flight time which is tf and we also want you to find the velocity with which your projectile strikes the ground in the y direction once you have all this information then you can turn your attention in four we can turn your attention to what's happening in the horizontal direction by this time you would have known how how much time what the flight time was going to be or the size of the flight time how much time you projectile spent in the air so using that flight time you would proceed to multiply your flight time times the x component of the launch velocity along the x direction which is ux ux times whatever the flight time is then you'd get the range then also you will be able to find out what the strike velocity of the projectile is going to be along the y direction we know that our projectile starts from off from maximum height at maximum height the velocity is zero meters per second when it comes off from maximum height coming towards the ground in the vertical direction the velocity is going to increase by 9.8 meters per second and as it increases it will have to strike the ground with some sort of velocity so that's what you're looking for we want to find the formula for that so let's get started so the first thing we're going to do is whatever velocity you have we're going to give you a launch velocity you will have a launch velocity u and with this launch velocity you're also going to give you an angle yes you have a question yes what you said that in the x-axis uh, the velocity is just the same throughout yes so that launch velocity is it the, the final of the initial no this is the launch velocity it's not along the x-axis it's not along the y-axis this is the velocity with which the projectile is fired at an angle what is the same along the x-axis is the x component of the launch velocity so we are going to give you a launch velocity u and we are going to give you an angle at which this projectile is fired 
with this launch velocity u which is here what you are going to do is you are going to find out how much is this velocity along the x axis that is the x component of the launch velocity the launch velocity is u how much is the velocity or how much is this launch velocity along the x axis that is the x component and you also need to find out how much is the launch velocity along the y axis that is the y component so in this case your x component which is ux u for the launch velocity and x for the direction is equals to u the launch velocity multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the launch the the, the, the launch velocity which is a vector and the x axis this ux is what the one which is constant okay this ux is the one which is constant the velocity of your projectile along the x axis is always the same it will always be ux which is u cos theta along the y axis this launch velocity u is going to be equal to ui is equal to u sin theta so with this table we know how much the velocity of our projectile is along the x axis and we also know how much the velocity of our projectile is along the y axis this ux and uy these are initial velocities in the x axis there is no acceleration so we can afford to ignore anything about the x direction for the time being our focus is going to be in what's happening to what is in the y direction so we start off going upwards in the vertical direction with this velocity because we have to approach maximum height and when we reach maximum height the velocity at maximum height is equal to zero so we start off with an initial velocity ui which is equal to u sine theta which is the y component of the launch velocity and we have to go towards maximum height by the time we reach maximum height our velocity at maximum height must always be equal to zero meters per second so our velocity would have reduced from this ui which is equal to u sine theta to zero meters per second the fact that our velocity reduces means that the acceleration has to be negative so the value of our acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second how do we how do we convey the fact that our acceleration is going to cause the velocity to re reduce we put a negative and since we are on earth whether you go up or you come down the actual size the magnitude of your acceleration is always going to be the same it's always going to be 9.8 meters per second the only thing which is different is that when you are going up your acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second when you are coming down your acceleration is plus 9 meters per second so using this information we are going to try to work out the rise time using this equation here which we used yesterday so vy which is the final velocity at maximum height is equals to uy which is the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by t rise which is the rise time that's what you're looking for at maximum height vy we know that the velocity of our projectile in the y direction is going to be zero meters per second the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be u sine theta this u sine theta is the x component of the velocity sorry is the y component of the velocity the initial the y component of the initial velocity in the y direction this is u sine theta we get it from the table then we put a plus now we do something with the 9.8 when you're going up it's negative but then we write g so instead of writing minus 9.8 we write minus g because the g is the size of the of the acceleration due to gravity it's always 9.8 so the same information can be expressed by putting a negative in front then we are trying to say that this acceleration minus g is going to cause a reduction in the velocity of the projector going up then we multiply that by rise time 
So when you do this, here of course we drop off some units. So this is going to be zero this side. This is going to be equals to u sine theta. Then this plus multiplied by this negative is going to be minus then g t rise. Like things. And we get this minus g t rise to the other side. You end up with g t rise equals to u sine theta. Then you divide both sides by g. So you end up with t rise is equals to u sine theta divided by g. So this formula, equation number one, t rise is equals to u sine theta divided by g is the one you're going to use to work out the rise time. As you can see, as long as you're on earth, your g is 9.8. So in this case, for this formula, we have already taken care of the fact that you are going up by including this negative there. So the only thing you need to do in this formula is you need to plug in what is the launch velocity, u, what is the angle, so you say you work out u, then sine theta, what is the angle, and you plug in the value of acceleration due to gravity. This should give you how much time it takes your projectile to get to maximum height. Are we clear? So far, so good. Okay. Next, now that we know how much time it takes for us to get to maximum height, which is equal to t rise u sine theta, uh, u sine theta divided by g, we can work out the same way we did yesterday, the maximum height which is reached by the projectile, s max. And how do we do that? We use this formula. s max is equal to u y multiplied by the rise time plus half g t rise squared. So in our case, our u y is the initial velocity in the y direction and u y is what you have here u sine theta then the t rise is what you found here u sine theta divided by g so we make the substitutions and remember that we are going up so when you're going up our acceleration is going to be negative and that's how we end up writing minus g here so we end up when you substitute your u y is going to be u sine theta multiplied by the rise time you found as u sine theta divided by g then plus half minus g, then u sine theta uh, divided by g, the whole thing squared. Then when you work out that, so you multiply this bit times this thing on top here, you end up with u squared sine squared theta divided by g. Then you have got this plus and this negative. So that's going to give you a negative. Then there's half multiplied by g. So you end up with g divided by half. Then you end up with minus g divided by half. Then there's this thing in the brackets being squared, so you end up with u squared sine squared theta divided by g squared. There is this g squared here, and there is this g up there. So this g and this g on top cancels out one of these g's, so you end up with, and you multiply these two by the remaining g, so you end up with, at the bottom here, you end up with 2g. So on top you have what u squared uh, sine squared theta divided by g minus another u squared sine squared theta divided by g. So this side you've got the denominator is g, this other side the denominator is 2g. So the common denominator in that case is 2g. So this g into 2g is going to be 2 and that 2 multiplied by this, this gives you 2 u squared sine squared theta then minus 2g divided by into 2g that's 1 then the one multiplied by this, that gives you u squared sine squared theta. Then two u squared sine squared theta minus u squared sine squared theta, this term is the same. So it's, it's like you're doing 2x minus 2x, 2x, whatever this is, this is 2, then whatever this is, it can be x. If, if you're doing your mathematics, x minus x. So that gives you u squared sine squared theta divided by 2g. So this is... The, way, the formula you use for finding your maximum height which is attained by your projectile. S max is equal to u squared sine squared theta divided by 2g. That is our second equation for finding S max. Next, is there any question so far here?
Any question? No, no question. Okay, that's good. Next, if we assume, now the next thing we need to find is the four time. So, we work out the four time by measuring the amount of time it takes your projector, which is coming from maximum heights, to reach the ground. Now, if we make the simple assumption that the distance or the, 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 the distance the projector covered when going up is the same distance which the projector covers when coming down, then in that case, we can say that when the projector falls from maximum height, the distance it's going to cover is S max. And in equation two, we have an expression of what S max is supposed to look like. So we know what S max is. Our projectile is starting from maximum height. At maximum height, the initial velocity or the velocity at maximum height is always zero meters per second. So at maximum height, the initial velocity is zero meters per second. The velocity at maximum height will not stay the same. As the projectile approaches the surface of the Earth, its velocity will increase. And the reason why it's increasing is because the F is pulling on this object. The acceleration in that case is positive, and we know that it's 9.8 meters per second, plus 9.8 meters per second. So in our case, we're just going to write G. What we are looking for is how much time it will take this thing to fall, when we are calling that T4. So all, with all these things, the formula we're going to use is this. S max is equals to UY, which is the initial velocity, at maximum height multiplied by the four time which is what we are looking for plus half then the acceleration due to gravity g this in this case because we're coming down our acceleration is going to be positive multiplied by t4 squared the distance which our projectile is going to cover as it falls is the same as the maximum height this is the assumption we are making this is not always the case because sometimes you can throw something up then it hangs from tenge or it hangs on a mountain so the distance it falls through after it reaches maximum height might not be the same so here we are specifically looking at a special case where the distance the projectile covers going up and the distance the projectile covers coming down are the same so the distance going up and the distance coming down are the same that's why this side our s max we put it as u squared sine squared theta divided by 2g then our initial velocity at maximum height is zero meters per second because at maximum height in the y direction your projectile always has a velocity of zero meters per second then you multiply that by t4 plus half g which is the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by t4 squared this if you drop your units or whatever it is you're going to do you multiply this zero times the t4 is going to give you this zero so you end up with u squared and squared theta divided by 2g equals to zero plus half gt squared g, uh, g t4 squared we are looking for the t4 here now so we end up the zero plus this gives us the we have u squared and squared theta divided by 2g equals to half then g t squared uh what is t4 this two is supposed to be four okay you have a half here you have a half this side because if we two at the bottom we two at the bottom so you can cancel out the half on both sides when you cancel the half on both sides you end up with u squared this side sine squared theta divided by g equals to g t four squared then on both sides, we divide by G on both sides. So this side, I divide by G. Then this side, I also divide by G. So when I divide by G on that side, this side, I'm going to end up with T4 squared equals to U squared sine squared theta divided by G squared. Then I take the square root on both sides. So I'm going to have the square root of T4 squared equals to the square root of U squared sine squared theta divided by G squared. When you do this, you end up with T4 equals to u sine theta divided by g so with this expression you can see that this expression of t4 t4 equals to u, u sine theta 
divided by g is the same as this expression if you look at this this expression of t4 the four time is the same as the expression we have for the rise time u sine theta divided by g so the formulas are the same the reason why the formulas are the same is because we are assuming that the distance to maximum height and the distance through which the projectile falls are going to be the same is this clear so that's your third equation for t4 after that since we know uh the rise time which is equals to t rise equals to u sin theta divided by g then we also know t4 which is equals to u sin theta divided by g we can always work out the flight time so here we are saying this rise time is equals to four time which is equals to u sin theta divided by g we can work out the flight time the flight time is the sum is the total amount of time your projectile is in the air so in this case, your flight time TF is going to be equal to T rise plus T4. So your flight time uh, TF is going to be T rise is U sin theta divided by G plus your four time is U sin theta divided by G. You add this U sin theta divided by G plus U sin theta divided by G, you end up with T4, which is equal the, the flight time is equal to 2 U sin theta divided by G. So this is your flight time. It's just twice whatever these things are. So your flight time TF is equal to 2 U sine theta divided by G. Now, I want to bring something to your attention here. In all these formulas we have come up with, TF, uh, T rise, the only thing you need to know, substitute is U, the velocity you've given you, then the angle. On F, G is 9.8. Here, maximum height. The maximum height, what you need is the velocity you're, you're launching, your projector up with, and the angle. G is the same on eighth. It does not matter. This formula does not care about the mass of the projectile. Whether it is a small projectile, whether it is a large projectile, as long as all these things are launched, with the same velocity at the same angle they are going to take the same amount of time to reach maximum height they will reach the same amount of maximum height so whether you throw something big or you throw something small as long as the velocity is the same and the angle at which you are throwing them are the same and assuming that we have not shifted from earth to mars we are still on earth then g is always going to be 9.8 so the only thing you need in this case is the velocity with which your thing is going out in the air and the angle at which it's being thrown nothing to do with the mass same thing applies to the flight how much time your projectile is going to be in the air that also depends on the velocity with which your projectile is fired or thrown up in the air multiplied by the angle at which your projectile is thrown at. Are we clear? Do we have any questions? Yes. What are the questions? If you say you have a question. Yes, there's, 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 there's the is coming down is there any change in the sign of the of the distance is there a change in the what sign of the distance if it is displacement what do you mean is there a change in the sign of the distance what are you trying to say if you're considering displacement and not distance we are not talking about displacement or distance. We are only talking about rise time, four time, maximum uh, height attained, and flight time here. The only kind of distance you are interested in when it comes to your projectile is how far it's going to travel horizontally 
or the maximum height is going to reach. That's all you're interested in. So I don't understand what you're trying to find out. Any other question? Um, I came across this question that required uh, me to find the point of intersection. Uh, to find the what? Point of intersection, a stone is dropped and then another one is drawn upwards two seconds later. Uh -huh. So I was wondering how that one would be calculated for. What are you trying to calculate? The time at which they're going to intersect. They're going to meet each other. The one that's been dropped and the one that's been thrown upon. Yeah, you're going to do that in a tutorial, Angela, not here. That's what the tutorial is for. Okay. Any other question? Yes? Yes? Go ahead. Maybe you can show us again the slides on the time of you You've not seen the formula again. Time of what? Four time? This? Yes. Four time is equals to U sine theta divided by G. It is the same as the rise time. That's how we conclude that when you throw a stone up, the amount of time it takes a stone to reach maximum height and the amount of time it takes a stone to fall are going to be the same because these formulas are exactly the same. Here, yeah. rise time is equal to four time is equal to u sine theta divided by g. Is that clear? Yes. yes, sir. One of the things which they do when they're asking you a physics question, they will tell you to say, "This thing flew for six minutes for six seconds." If something flew for six seconds from the bottom, whatever, when it was launched, to when it was, it reached the ground, from that flight time, you should be able to find, from this expression here, you can see that the flight time, TF, is twice whatever T rise is or whatever TF is. Flight time is just two times the rise time or two times the four time. Okay? So when we give you, sometimes we are going to give you the flight time. Say this thing, the stone or the tear gas canister flew for this amount of time. When we give you that flight time, we are asking you to use your knowledge about how you come up with flight time and the fact that flight time in this case like this is twice the rise time and twice the four time. So if flight time is twice the rise time and twice the four time, and maybe we tell you this thing was fired at a particular angle or it was fired with this velocity, then you should be able to find what the launch velocity was or you should be able to find what the angle is from such a situation. Okay, we will not give you everything. We want you to use this knowledge which you are acquiring here. The other thing we want to show is the velocity with which in the y direction the projectile is going to hit the ground now we know a couple of things already we know how to work out the four time the four time is just u sine theta divided by g so if you know the amount of time it takes your thing to fall and since this thing is falling from maximum height at maximum height the initial velocity is always zero meters per second squared and it is falling towards the surface of the earth where the acceleration is g then you can work out what the final velocity is going to be using that expression v is equals to u plus gt so you're going to have the final velocity in the y direction vy is going to be equals to the initial velocity in the y direction now you are coming from maximum height where the initial velocity is zero meters per second squared plus the acceleration since you're g since you're going towards the surface of the earth, multiplied by the amount of time it's going to take your thing to fall, which is T4. So in our case, UI, since you're coming from maximum height, UI is 0 meters per second squared, and we're looking for T4, and we know G. So we substitute, we end up with VY is equal to 0 meters per second squared plus G multiplied by T4, which is U sine theta divided by G. You have a G here. You've got a G at the bottom. These G's will cancel out. So you end up with VY equals to 0 
plus u sine theta. So here you end up with vy is equal to u sine theta. So the velocity with which your thing, your projectile is going to strike the ground is equals to u sine theta. But if you look at where we started, u sine theta is also equals to the following. u sine theta is also equals to this. This is u sine theta. u sine theta is also equals to ui. That's why we conclude. This is the reason why we conclude that the velocity with which the projectile strikes the ground is the same as the velocity with which the projectile was launched in the y direction. Uy is equals to Vy, which is equals to U sine theta. Are we clear? We are going through the same process we went through yesterday. Except yesterday, we had a bunch of numbers. This time around, we don't want to have a bunch of numbers. We want to come up with formulas we can use to work out those things. Again, as you can see, the only thing you need is the U, the launch velocity. What is the velocity with which something was launched and the angle at which it was launched? The th now we know everything about what's happening in the Y direction. We have found out the rise time. We have found the maximum height. We have found the fall time. We have found the flight time. We have found the strike velocity in the Y direction. So we now turn our attention to what's happening in the X direction. In the X direction, like I've said before, in the horizontal direction, there is no acceleration. So the velocity, the initial velocity in the X direction, UX, is the same as the final velocity in the X direction, VX. Since the velocity does not change, so we have constant velocity in the X direction, the amount of distance which the, the projectile is going to cover in a certain amount of flight time, TF, is, go, is given by this expression, UX multiplied by TF. So you multiply your UX, which is your velocity in the X direction, multiplied by the flight time, which is this. When you do that, so ux is u sine theta, like this, then your flight time, tf, is what you have up here, 2 u sine theta divided by g. So that's that, 2 u sine theta divided by g. So when you multiply this thing here times that thing here, you end up with, uh, there's a 2 here, so that's a 2 we have here. There's a u, and there's a u here, so you end up with u squared. Then you've got a cos theta here, which is this here. Then you've got a sine theta there, which is what you have there. Then the whole thing divided by, by g. The next thing we do deliberately is we put outside the brackets, we put u squared, which is this. We pull out u squared and we pull out g. When we pull out u squared and pull out g, which is what you've done here, u squared divided by g, inside here we remain with this. 2 cos theta sin theta. Now, this is what's left here is now just mathematics. And we can, this expression, 2, uh, two cos theta sin theta, we can come up with this expression by exploiting something called trigonometric identities, especially compound angles. For example, in our case, what we are actually interested in is this one here sine then a plus b now the sine of a plus b as an identity from your mathematics is equals to sine a cos b plus sine b cos a that's what it is being physics people and being lazy so we decide to do the following what if a and b are the same so in this case we are saying if a and b are the same we're going to say sine a plus a. So where there was b, we have put a. This is sine a plus a, which is what we have here. This inside here is going to be equals to sine 2a. This a plus a is going to give you sine 2, 2a. This thing here should be the same as this sine. 
The only difference is that where there is B here and there, we are going to put A. So we're going to end up with sin A cos A plus sin A cos A. So you've got a sin A cos A, then you've got a sin A cos A here. So you end up with 2 sin A cos A. So what we have come up with so far is this sin 2a is equals to 2 sin a cos a because we are doing physics and our what we are looking for is this you can see that this which we have here 2 cos theta sin theta is identical to this 2 sin a cos a the only difference is that in our problem instead of a what we have is theta Instead of this A, in our problem here, what we have is theta. So, being physics people again, lazy, always going to the mathematics people to get something, we replace here. We replace it with theta. If you replace A with theta here, so you end up with 2 sine theta cos theta, then this side also you can replace A with theta, you end up with sine 2 theta. So you end up with this thing here. Sine 2 theta is equals to 2 sine theta cos theta. That's why we can replace this whole thing here with a much simpler version this, sine 2 theta. So after that, when you do the substitution, you end up with R equals to U sine theta over G, which is equals to sine 2 theta. When you put this thing on top a bit like that, more neatly, you end up with R equals to U squared sine 2 theta divided by G. This is the expression you use for finding the range. Any range. So for you to find the range, you need to know what the initial velocity is, the launch velocity, and you also need to know the angle at which it's being launched. Okay. If you are interested in something called maximum range, which is the maximum distance which a projectile can travel, if that's what you're interested in, then this expression here, this is a sine expression. This expression has to be set to 1. How does it become equals to 1? Because if this angle here, theta, is equals to 45, so it's going to be 2 times 45, that's going to give you 90 degrees, then sine 90 degrees is equals to 1. Sine has got a maximum value of 1 at 90 degrees. So this whole thing here becomes equals to 1. So the angle of theta has to be 45 degrees. So in that case, when sine, sine 2 theta, which is equal to 90 degrees, becomes equal to 1, then your range just becomes R max, which is maximum range, becomes u squared divided by g. So there is a relationship here. If you know the maximum range, maximum range is related to the velocity and g so u squared there by this so you can be given the maximum range from this maximum range you should know that the angle for you to have maximum range the angle should be theta like that at the same time using this maximum range you should be able to obtain u by just making u the subject of the formula so you're going to end up with u equals to the square root of r max multiplied by g any questions We are finished. Do you have any questions? Okay, so if there are no questions, then I can knock off. The video recording is going to be posted to YouTube and the link shared in Moodle. Yes, do we have a question? Yes. What's the question? Go ahead. You said that in the X, in the range, there's no acceleration. Why are you adding the G? What? You said in the X direction, there's no acceleration. Why is there a G there? Why is there what? 
Why is there the, the G for gravity? You said there's no acceleration. Yeah, there's no acceleration. Yes, but why is the G there? Why is the, why is the G there? Oh, we are coming in from here. This. That's where it's coming from. Because the G comes from this side. The G comes from the flight time. That's where the G is coming from. The G comes from the flight time. Are the question answered? Yes. The, the fact question. that there's a G does not mean that the thing is changing. This here, Aramax equals to U, U squared over G. This is distance. Okay? Acceleration has to do with change in velocity. So it, there's no relationship between the distance and the velocity here. We are talking about range. We're not talking about acceleration here. Are we clear? Yes. I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. I ask, uh, in the formula, you put uh, theta is equal to 45. Where did you get it? Or maybe, is it that the, the range is maximum at an angle of 45 degrees? Sine is maximum. This angle sine. Sine ranges, when you look at the sine curve, it ranges between plus 1 and minus 1. So it's not about me choosing, but it's yes. about the value of sine. Sine has got a maximum value of 1. And that maximum value of 1 is at 90 degrees. The only way we're going to get the 90 degrees, if this angle is equal to 90 degrees, that's when you can have a maximum value of sine. So if 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees, then it means that theta should be 45. Here, if 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees, All then right, it means sir. that theta should be 45. Any other question? All right. Okay, so if there are no other questions, we will stop here. The video sir, recording sir. is going to go to YouTube right now. Now, you can have a question. Have a, yes. Have a question again. Mm. I, I, I saw a question. It read that. At what angle is the range maximum? Uh -huh. Sorry. Should the answer be 45 degrees? It is at 45 degrees. Yes, it's at 45 degrees. All right. Yeah. All okay. Right. Have a good weekend. Uh, see you next week.